Good morning, everybody. Um, so I'm going to talk about immunotherapy for the treatment of metastatic kidney cancer today. Um, so as many of you probably know, immunotherapy was regarded, once regarded as an ancient therapy of you know, almost the Jurassic period. Uh, however, recent progress in research has re revived, really revived the uh, dinosaur Im immunotherapy for treatment of cancer. So uh, I'm going to spend some time with you today to review the history of immunotherapy. And more importantly, I'm going to uh, share with you some exciting data in the field of immunotherapy, especially for the treatment of kidney cancer. So why are we interested in immunotherapy? Well, uh, we know immune system can kill cancer cells. However, the immune system kill cancer cells in a different way from the traditional chemotherapy and the target agents. First of all, it's adaptable. So when the cancer cell changes, the immune system can also change accordingly. Second, it's, uh, it's specific. So the immune system will target the cancer cell directly and spare the normal healthy cells. Third, it has memory. So as you know, cancer cells can hibernate in your body for many years. So even after 10 years of hibernation, when these cancer cells wake up, the immune system also wake up, try to catch these cancer cells. And there are quite a few reasons for us to develop immunotherapy as treatment for cancer patients. First, we know tumors with more infiltrating lymphocytes actually are associated with good prognosis. Second, we know that mutations during cancer development and progression actually can create these new antigens. And these new tumor antigens can be recognized by the T cells and the immune system. Through history, many, immuno, many strategies have been used for immunotherapy. The earliest strategy was to just use bacteria stimulants to stimulate the immune system, which I will talk about more in a moment. The second one was to use cytokines to energize the immune system to kill cancer cells. Pe people also tried to use vaccines and adopt T cell therapy. So these two methods are not used for kidney cancer. Therefore, I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to talk about them today. But I will spend the majority of time to talk about immune checkpoint blockade therapy, which really uh, has shown some great potential for kidney cancer. So the bacteria products were first used by William Coley to, kill, uh, to treat cancer, known as Coley's toxin. So Dr. Coley actually cured the first patient with these bacteria products over 120 years ago. And later on, it was found that it was interfering alpha, actually, that was stimulated by this colitis toxin uh, to, to kill cancer cells. And uh, he treated quite a variety of tumors. And uh, the, the, most tu the tumors he treated the most was soft tissue sarcoma. And uh, as you can tell from this data, he treated more than 100 patients. And over 50% of these patients can actually can live more than five years. For kidney cancer, he only treated six patients at that time. Three patients didn't have response. The other three, which is 50%, actually lived more than five years. So even by today's standard, the, uh, Dr. Coley was quite successful. So why Coley's toxin was not approved for, for treatment of kidney cancer? That's because it's too toxic. So after patients receive this Coley's toxin, they have shaking chills. They really become very, very, very sick. Therefore, FDA actually didn't approve Coley's toxin for treatment of kidney cancer. And then almost 100 years later, people found IL-2 actually has activities against kidney cancer. That's because IL-2 can stimulate T cells and the natural killer cells to kill tumor cells. Other than IL-2, interferon alpha and interferon beta were also shown to have modest activities 
against uh, kidney cancer, as Dr. Tanir just talked about a moment ago. So this is the high-dose IL-2 data on a total of 255 patients. 37 patients actually had response. So of these 37 patients, 17 patient, patients had a complete response. But please note, of these 17 patients, 80% of them lived up to 10 years and beyond. And for those patients who had only partial response, and uh, there are 20 of them in total. So only 30%, actually only about 25% of them lived to, up to almost 10 years. So really, IL-2 therapy offers the long-term survival potential for, for patients. However, the response rate is pretty low. So the complete response rate is lower than 7%. The partial response rate is lower than 15%. And it is, again, a very toxic therapy. So many patients who receive high-dose IL-2 have to be monitored in the ICU setting. Therefore, IL-2 therapy is really limited to the younger and healthier patients. And then Dr. Tanir already showed you this piece of data by combining interferon alpha and bevacizumab. As you can tell from the table here, the combination therapy actually can um, improve the progression survival of patients, which means it delays the tumor recurrence or progression by about three months. And because of this, bevacizumab plus interferon alpha, along with high-dose IL-2, were approved by the FDA for the treatment of uh, kidney, metastatic kidney cancer, along with many target agents that were discussed by Dr. Tanir just a moment ago. So this is basically the timeline of the treatment options for uh, renal cell carcinoma. So uh, in 1980s, IL-2 and interferon alpha were first shown to have activities against kidney cancer. And then 10 years later, high-dose IL-2 was approved by the FDA. And over the past 10 years, seven to 10 years also, there is just an explosion of these target agents, which are really great options for treatment of, uh, of metastatic kidney cancer. And because of these agents, people's life, uh, people with metastatic disease, the average survival has increased from you know, about a year to, um, to more than two years. And then this is the combination of bevacizumab plus interferon alpha. However, despite the recent success of these target agents, we all know that many of these patients will develop resistance to the treatment just within months. So after that, we have to switch to another agent. So the question is, do we have any better therapy with, with long-term survival potential? And then that's when the immunotherapy, immune checkpoint therapy enters the picture. So what is immune checkpoint therapy? I have to uh, talk about immunology just a little bit here. So in order for the T cells to be activated for tumor cell killing, it needs two sets of signals between the antigen-presenting cells and the T cells. The first set of signal is delivered by the interaction between this T cell receptor and the tumor antigens bound to an MHC molecule. The second set of signal is provided by CD28 binding to B7. So in a way, this is like driving a car, okay? So the first set of signal is like the ignition system. So you need to turn on the car. And then the second set of signal is like the gas pedal. After turning on the car, you need the gas pedal to speed up the car so that you, know, you can kill tumor cells. However, we all know if we only have the ignition system and the gas pedal, and then you drive a car, sooner or later you are gonna run into problem because you are gonna speed up and you cannot slow down and you're gonna crash and burn. So the immune system is actually very smart. It actually has its own braking system. One of these brakes is called CTLA-4. The other one is called PD-1. They are responsible for slowing down the immune system after it's activated. 
However, the side effect of this breaks would be decreased tumor cell killing. So James Anderson, who is the director of the immunotherapy platform at MD Anderson, found that if you use an antibody to block this inhibitor, to block this breaks, to take the breaks off these T cells, you actually can allow the T cells to stay activated for augmented tumor cell killing. And that's, that's how the first drug, ipilimumab, is developed. So ipilimumab is basically a monoclonal antibody against that molecule named CTLA-4 here. It was first tested in advanced melanoma patients who on average has a survival of about a year, just like metastatic kidney cancer. However, as you can see from the data here, after these patients receive ipilimumab, <coughs> over 20% of them can live up to almost five years, and that is quite significant. So what if you put ipilimumab and the other uh, antibody that breaks anti-PD-1, which is named nivlumab? So again, this is in melanoma patients as you can tell from the data here. So on average, please remember on average, these patients live for about 12 months. But here at one year, 82% of the patients are still alive. By three years, over 70% of the patients are still alive. And that is very, very dramatic. And that's why immune checkpoint therapy was offered breakthrough of the year honor by the science magazine. So what about these therapies in kidney cancer? So based upon these phase two trials at lower concentration, ipilimumab didn't have very much effect in kidney cancer. However, at the normal concentration that we use for the treatment of metastatic melanoma patients, five out of 40 patients actually had partial response. For nivolumab, the result is even better. So at six months, over about 24% uh, 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 of the patients actually showed partial response, and 24% 24 patient, uh, of patients actually showed stable disease. So overall, almost 50% of patients actually benefited from uh, nivolumab at a very low concentration of one milligram per kg. Per kg. At higher concentration, the response rate increased to over 30%, and the stable disease uh, rate increased to over 30%. So overall, more than 60% act patients actually benefit from nivolumab. So what about putting those two drugs together? We don't have data yet. Recently, we just designed a clinical trial to combine uh, either nivolumab with ipilimumab or bevacizumab, which is a standard treatment for uh, kidney cancer as discussed by Dr. Tanir. So we designed this three-arm trial. The, in the first arm, patients will receive nivolumab. In the second arm, patients will receive <coughs> nivolumab plus bevacizumab. And in the third arm, patients will receive the combination of nivolumab plus ipilimumab. After three, six weeks of treatment, they will have surgery to remove the kidney with disease. And if they have either stable disease or response before the surgery, we, they will continue on nivolumab. So this trial actually has quite a few advantages. First of all, all these patients will receive at least double therapy or even triple therapy. So patients in arm one will get nivolumab plus surgery, which is a standard treatment for metastatic disease um, with the, the intact kidney tumor. So patients in arm B and arm three will receive triple therapy. Second of all, this design will allow us to collect blood samples before and after each trial, and also collect tumor samples before and after each, each uh, treatment. This way, we can study the biology of these drugs directly in human body. And hopefully, we can identify biomarkers 
to improve these therapies and also identify new targets uh, for further therapy. So with these target agents, we know we can pro prolong survival a little bit. And with immunotherapy, we can see this tail end effect, uh, which is long-term survival. And by combining these immunotherapy agents with each other, and also with the traditional target agents, we hope we can not only prolong survival, but also increase the response rates in patients with uh, metastatic kidney cancer. With that, I would like to thank uh, cl the collaborators from the immunotherapy platform from pathology, on geo-oncology, and also, also urology. But above all, I would like to thank our patients and their families for your support with our research and clinical trials. And we hope, and I hope we can continue to work together to rewrite cancer history. Thank you very much for your attention.